Life is something, isn't it? I had an order in which I wanted all of this to go. You see, I do, um, when I can, I do jot down outlines. I've been debating, would I rather write down a sort of script for what I want to say to you, or would I rather just talk? And why or why not? That's something that I've been thinking a lot about. I'm delving into the concept lately of talking as a creative form of self-expression, quite like writing, but its own being its own distinct thing. And I've actually seen other people mention this. I found one article on Medium. I owe you some kind of citation or reference. I didn't copy it down. I happen to have just caught it uh, towards the end of my reading period, reading time, free time for reading that I had, uh, right as it was about time for me to call it a day. So I didn't uh, finish writing it down. But there was this guy who was writing on about just talking as an art, uh, like writing, but not quite writing. And yeah, so why write versus why talk? This is something I have been chatting with you about. I believe I had said that, and I would reiterate this as a sort of principle, that when there's something you really want to codify, I think, in a very official way for the purpose either of persuasion or articulating a theory or rote explication of information, these are instances where I think that writing is most conducive. On the other hand, I think when you just want to talk about something, why not just talk about it? Especially in the context of our times where you can just look right at your webcam and chat with the world if you should wish. I think that changes the way things the way things are. And obviously with podcasts and talk radio and talk shows and vlogs, right? This is a concept I think that is for the first I don't know if it's for the first time. I don't I mean to my understanding like Native American tribes might have instances where someone would have, you know, talk freely to the crowd. Though that might be more of a storytelling setup, um, but I don't have enough information, enough research on that topic to comment further on that. Though I'm not ignorant of the topic of Native Americans, I took my senior seminar senior capstone course on Native Americans. So anyway, didn't want you to think I was talking too loosely, though it's inevitable, isn't it? A bit of loose talk. It's an interesting song by the Bee Gees, Loose Talk Costs Lives. I'm a major Bee Gees fan. Uh, in the future, I will certainly take the opportunity to tell you more about my love for the Bee Gees. However, that's not on my agenda, and I do like to have an agenda, so to speak. In fact, well, okay. Ah, there's so many things that I, I, it is interesting because you prepare a setup for what you want to say, and then you go on and you begin to speak, and it's going to go its own way. It's, I mean, it's like writing. It's like creative writing in that you can plot out to a degree where you want to go with it, but ultimately the subconscious is going to take over and you're just going to go, right? I had begun 
this video diary vlog entry, I believe, by talking about how life is something, isn't it? I think was the expression I used. I say that for the following reason. And yes, I'm going out of order here. So, I was talking to you recently also about this concept of practical clarificationism, right? And trying to distinguish it from pragmatism. And I told you that I would certainly have to do my due diligence in further exploring pragmatism so that I could critique it uh, with a bit more knowledge and nuance and credibility and depth. And I happen to be having this conversation with a gentleman I consider my mentor and who I used to work for and whose political science course I've taken and who also is a professor of philosophy, political science, and history. And he suggested that I do check out a bit more about pragmatism, and he suggested the Stanford Encyclopedia of Philosophy. Now I said life is a funny thing, and here's why. To me, it's interesting how, and in fact, this will correspond really well to this pragmatism theme, actually. You can get, you can, you can pursue and receive a fine education and still find yourself with an income, a sense of incompletion, a sense of incompleteness, rather, uh, missing context. Uh, just to give you a perfect example, some of my philosophical research, especially in the earlier days, would be thanks to Bertrand Russell and this wonderful book, The History of Western Philosophy. Say cheese, Sean, cheese. You know, because of the thumbnail pictures, Sometimes it's interesting to have more visual stimulation by having like a book in your hand or something that just allows for more animation. No, I don't know if animation is the right word, but I don't know. Substantiveness, if you will. Or as Barry Gibb of the Bee Gees once said in a documentary as I was watching, or if you won't, I think is what he said. Uh, and I hate when I go, uh, my coworker and I were just talking about that earlier today. So it's funny to me because Bertrand Russell goes through all this effort to give you the story, his abbreviated story of Western philosophy, right? But he never talks about Charles Sanders Peirce, one of the pragmatists. He talks about John Dewey and William James, but he doesn't talk about Pierce. And it's interesting because uh, it was, I'm going to do the awful thing and cite Wikipedia, but for whatever it's worth, F W I W, would that be the uh, text message internet millennial? ZX generation, whatever way to say, um, you know, for whatever it's worth. Uh, he, the Wikipedia, the, in the Wikipedia article, it references, I mean, I could bring it up for you and be a little bit more responsible. I don't know where I put my cellular device. Did I put it in my pocket? Yes, here it is. I, I wanted to know, though, who this uh, was attributed to. But in the Wikipedia article, Sanders is considered one of the greatest American philosophers of all time. Charles Sanders Pierce. Let's go to Charles Sanders. Charles Sanders Pierce. I just want to see who had said this. 
I did think it was very interesting. Um, Webster's Biographical Dictionary, according to this Wikipedia article, said that um, in 1943 that Pierce was, quote, now regarded as the most original thinker and greatest logician of his time. Keith Devlin similar, similarly referred to Pierce as one of the greatest philosophers ever. We'll start with the Webster's Biographical Dictionary. Uh, they do source it properly in this Wikipedia article, so that's good. And um, Keith Devlin, they do appear to source that properly. Again, I mean, the problem with Wikipedia is you really do have to do your due diligence, but I'm just I'm telling you that I happen to take a look at it. I'm not telling you I'm treating it as like an authoritative anything. To be honest, I'm not familiar with this Keith Devlin guy. But it is interesting that someone of such great esteem, who is considered a foundational thinker, wouldn't be covered in, say, a book like this. He's also not a pragmatist that... Um, you know, Ayn Rand and Leonard Peikoff like to go after the pragmatists among the philosophers they went after. And, I mean, at least to my memory, I don't recall so much effort spent on him. So it's just interesting how this name can be out there that is considered by so many an important name, and yet you don't come across it. Not because you're inherently ignorant or uneducated, but because... In fact, in the pursuit of education, you just can't get it all.